<clears throat> All right, guys. So, um, I made I made videos on on the end of. I mean, um, sorry about the audio, but I made videos on the NFL um, the other day. I made videos on the NFL season, my thoughts, and I made my uh, playoff predictions and who I thought was gonna make no <laughs> I'll tell you now that I um I, I, I was not, not very good in the wild card predictions um and then, so my Super Bowl predictions are um you know were wrong well at least at that point um, they were wrong um so So, um, but hey, um, we're, it's just a, you know, crazy, crazy NFL season, and it's, a you know, it's continuing into the, uh, playoffs. So, um, so I'm making, so, this will, this video will be on the Bucks, and, um, how their season went, um, and, and all that stuff, and uh, my thoughts. And you know, and, and and going forward with uh, with this team, and then uh, then I'll make another video on uh, on the predictions, and uh, and I'll have a new Super Bowl prediction, um, which I think will will probably end up c coming true. <laughs> um, so uh, I'll have my predictions on on um, for. This week, uh, in the divisional round. So, uh, so, so back to the Bucks. All right, this is the video is strictly mainly about the Bucks. I just had to throw that in there that I did make those videos for my wild card predictions and so on and so forth, and um, and, and my NFL season predictions for every, you know how I did, you know how teams fared. Um, you know, do, do they not meet, well, at least my expectations, or compared to, cause, uh, compared, compared to, uh, compared to my, uh, my predictions I made for every team back in June, um, which, if you wanted to check, if you want to check that out to, uh, you know, for proof, and to back it up. That was like one of my first videos. I did an NFL season preview, and the one I'm talking about now, I did an NFL season review. You know. So, all right. So, all right. So now it's all Bucks. All right. So all you Bucks fans out there, um, you know, um, this season. Uh, I mean, yeah, it really it sucks and it hurts that we did not, uh, you know, that uh, we didn't make it into the postseason. But, uh, but that's what next year that's gonna make us come out even hungrier. Um, I think, uh, it's, and and there's gonna have an effect on this uh, on the off season. It's gonna have an effect of you know, the, you know we're gonna go out there and want to make some moves and. You know, and make this team better. Um, all I say, all I say is, the team is close, guys. All right, the team, the team's close. Um, okay, but as far as okay, as far as this season, this past season, that that just you know concluded, um, you know, a week ago, a week and a half ago. You know, um, we. If, if anything, at least to most people, we kind of, we kind of maybe ex exceeded expectations in, in the win-loss call. Or pretty much right on cue, you know, being about 500, um, just missing out on the playoffs, um, in some ways, we... We were either 
to both people, we were right on cue um, with our expectations, if not, we exceeded some expectations in some areas. Um, I mean, it was kind of, you know, it was kind of a weird season. I mean, we started off slow, you know, three and five, and then, and then we won, went on a five-game winning streak, and then we ended the season, you know, two and four. You know that. You know that loss to the Cowboys and the Saints. Um, you know all we had to do was come away with one of those wins, and you know we be. Who know we could very well still, you know, be playing the playoffs right now. But I mean, yeah, I mean you could say that there are three or four teams, actually four teams that played. And the wild card. And one or two of them are still playing in the divisional round. That are strictly, you know, that the Bucks are simply better than. Um, the Bucks are better than the Lions. You know? And they're better than the Seahawks. They beat the Seahawks, so they are better than. Um, you know, they are, I mean, because uh, Oakland, I mean, they're they're only better than Oakland though, because of their because they don't have their their quarterback Derek Carr. <laughs> yes, Derek Carr, the season that he was having before that injury is better than Jameis. Uh, it's not any knock on Jameis people. It's just that's Derek Carr, but to Jameis, well, to I guess. To not credit Derek Carr is Derek Carr has more has more weapons and has a better offensive line to work with. So that, that's so you guys probably know my so you know that's an idea of who who I think we should get you know free to see draft and all that stuff. But um. But as far as this season, this season, this, this season was pretty good. I mean, we had up and downs. I mean, it's still a young team. Um, I mean, Dirk Cutter had Dirk Cutter had more wins total than 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 Lovey Smith did in, in his two years. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, with the rookie head coach, he still has some rookie, you know. Still have first year head coach um, deficiencies, I guess you could say. But that's part of being a coach in the NFL. Um, you know, you have the clock management issues. Um, and, you know, we thought it was going to be a fairly smooth transition because of Mike Smith, which uh, I'll, I'll get to talk about Mike Smith here, too. Um, what's going on in that front? You know, still a chance that we could lose him. But, well, before we get the defense, all right, let's talk about the offense. All right, the offense, I think the main, okay, there's a, I would say two to three things that really, that really hurt this, that really hurt the, well, honestly, there's quite a few things that hurt the offense this year. Small things, too. Not anything major big. Well, maybe one of them, but well, actually, there are major, but it's just small things that 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 we that that we can correct. All right, put that way. Um, number one, Jameis turnovers. His 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 turnovers. It's part of it's part of the reason why you know the offense was not um. You know what? Not efficient enough. You know, um, stalling, can kick it too many field goals, not scoring touchdowns in the red zone. It, it 
Jameis turnovers. Sometimes Jameis is afraid to throw the ball. Sometimes he's not afraid to, to throw the ball. So, um, I think Dirk Cutter and Jameis, you know, gotta, you know, they gotta, they gotta get things straight that they're, during the offseason and you know, work on what, you know, what they didn't have. What they didn't have going. I'm not. No, I'm not saying like they had like an issue going on, but just as far as play calling, though, they gotta, you know, they gotta get that worked out. If 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 Dirk Cutter is going to keep the play calling, duties, which I, I think he will. I don't think he's not gonna get that. Out. There there now that there is somebody out there, okay, not within, not within. I think the only reason that we that he would get rid of play calling duties if there is somebody out there that he truly thinks has a better feel for James. And besides, I think him giving up play calling duties will send the wrong message to 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 James and the team. I, at first, I was kind of maybe on the bandwagon of it. But then now that you think about it. I don't think he should. Because he, he, cause he was a rookie head coach. And he, and he will find ways to better manage his, um, his time with players. At less time. Um, towards, you know, game plan. I think he'll have co he'll have the coaches do more time to game planning. Uh, if anything, maybe maybe a couple a couple added or, or maybe or maybe some some people um, you know maybe some minor offensive staff changes, maybe adding a, a guy or two. The, but the only way I can see if there's a true off, uh, offensive consultant. Or 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 the guy or, or or the very experienced play caller that would definitely have a feel for Jameis in our offense to call plays on game day. There have to be somebody off the streets. I think that is the only way we get rid of it. It would only have to be strictly somebody. Would basically only be help game planning and calling plays, but necessarily though, and we'll, but see, but this is Dirk's offense, and I don't think they would want to send the wrong message to the team. Well, Dirk doesn't want to have his own right now. He's just a head coach. And, you know what is he? You know, is he really an offensive genius? Dirk is. Dirk is one of Want to, Dirk was gonna want to prove that hey he can do better play calling, and yeah I, I don't see I see I think it's an eight eighty to ninety percent chance that he keeps his play calling duties because he's done that his whole life he's not gonna give it up but I say there is that 10, 30, I mean 10 to 30 percent chance that he does. All right, it's it's still out there, but it I still think it's a fairly long shot. All right, so enough with that. Um, but okay, now other things on the offense. All right, besides the Jameis turnovers, the other um the other things um, is our run game. The run game was like pretty much non-existent, except we had that few game spell where um, Jaquiz Rogers came in and you know not putting the ball in and uh, Jameis' hands. We we're just kind of the rock hole game, especially that that first Carolina game. Um, I want to say it's not as it. People need to shut up about uh, our O line. Okay, yeah, the O line is not great, but you know what? It's the O line is sufficient. 
Yeah, it needs some help, but you know, no team is going to have a, you know, a strength. You know, all stars, all pros at every single position on the team. Yeah, the OI can use it, but you know what? Every team has weaknesses. Even Dallas had weaknesses. The Patriots have weaknesses. It's just the good coaches find ways to not show their weaknesses that much and show their strengths and, and exploit them. But, but as far as the O line go, yeah, it can use some help. Absolutely, it can it can use some help, maybe some shuffling. But as far as we you know, oh, we got a bunch of scrub ass players on there. No, we still have some good football players on that on that offensive line. No, I, no, as far as the O line goes. I would say, I don't. I think, I think they want to keep Donovan Smith at left tackle because I don't think they want to hinder his development. Yeah, he gave up a, a lot of pressures. Okay, he did give up some pressures. Okay, I'll give credit to that. He did get. He did give some pressures. But I think part of that too, we had nobody that could get open down the field, and and, and play calling could be better. And um and and, and James is being forced to having to throw the ball. I mean to having to well yeah and and throw the ball, but also um, the the, the old line was more. Sufficient when we were when we were a balanced offense last season, you know, dirt, you know, Jameis with his play actions, you know, running the ball, but also too, I think we can we should we need to mix it up, you know, throw the ball on first down, play action on first down, stuff like that, which we did at times, we did, like that Charger game for example, we did try a lot of play. And it, it, it worked a few times. We ended up winning the game. But, um, yeah. What does it mean to me now? But, um, yeah, it still does. So that's about 500. But, um, but I think uh, we may look at a replacement at center. Spending over a week of find out there. Um, we may look to replace DeMar Dawson. I think. I think the main thing is, I think, okay, if anybody is going to be replaced on the offensive line, it's going to be DeMar Dotham. It depends. It depends. And if it's going to be, and if it's going to be, um, And if we're, and if we're, and if we're going to replace him, it's probably going to be somebody through. I would guess it's going to be somebody through free agency. So there is a guy coming out uh, in free agency. Um, the Baltimore Ravens right tackle. Um, Rick Wagner, I believe his name is. He's a pretty decent right tackle. I think he would be serviceable. And maybe add... Um, as something that DeMar Dawson did not have. But the O line, I would say, was not a complete, was not the, a complete, it was still a problem, but not a complete problem. It's just, um, and then we have the issue with Doug, okay? Doug, he, uh, I mean, obviously we know what's been, both of us know what's happened already. You know, he got suspended. He wasn't active the second to last game against the Saints, and then and then um, he decided to take a team leave 
um, the last week. And now playing and beat this man against Carolina in the first three games of first three games of next season. So, because uh, apparently you know he was on drugs and Adderall and all the other stuff. Well, whatever, and you know, guys, guys, a light problem, like you know, some of us do. But um, he was he wasn't hitting the holes like he did. Like he did when he was healthy last season. And, I don't know. He just was not playing right. And obviously, you know we know why. Because because there were because even cause when there were times that the that the offensive line actually had you know something good, something decent. You know we would have holes. In some places, Doug wasn't hitting him like he did, you know, going, woo, 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 you know, going, woo, woo, whatever, you know, he, 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 he just wasn't doing it. And to quiz, you know, he has injuries, and, and when he came back, he was so so, and, um, and then, you know, then we weren't activating, and then once we had all, all the running backs getting healthy, the freaking Pam Barber w wasn't active, and Barber was actually in the, he was actually, you know, a, a lot of people, including myself, I mean, he, he, he was running the ball good, uh, so, who knows, maybe he can emerge as being, being, have, being a key piece that next season. And then, alright, so, so the offense Inefficiency would do to okay, so we got Jameis turnovers and well, the downfall of the offense Jameis turnovers, um, insufficient run game, O line and running backs both out of part, and um, and simply, um, we need we need at least somebody else besides. Mike Evans and Cameron and Cameron Britt. Well and Humphreys. We need we need a speed threat. Dirk Cutter was even talk he, he was talking about this too. We need a speed threat. We need like a Tyreek Hill, the Kansas City wide receiver uh -uh, on this team. We need a maybe not exit a, a Tyreek Hill type like you know, maybe not exactly like a Tyree Kill, but we, we need something like a Tyree Kill uh, uh, on this team. And I think, we, and I think a good chance that we find him is either maybe in free agency, like a maybe a Deshaun Jackson, or or find a speedy fast receiver in the draft that can run routes. Turn or another player in fantasy, Cordell Patterson. He can, he could potentially be that guy. Cause you know how Dirk liked to have those screens, and you know somebody that can catch a five, ten yard pass into a 30, 40 plus yard game. Okay, we need we need that type of guy. At least one, at least one. And Josh Huff, yeah, he's fast. Who knows? Maybe if off season in the playbook, maybe he can catch on. Okay. Because I mean, he's returned punts before, returned kick before, you know. And he's had a, you know, a couple long passes caught before. Um, so who knows? Maybe he could catch on. Maybe he could be that guy. Okay. Just wasn't there this season. You know, he came in, you know, late in the season, mid-season, and he, just, he wasn't able to catch on. He had a, he had a couple night nice plays here and there, but other than that, you know, eh. Um, he had the miscues. 
drop the kicks. You know, he cost us the Saints game. You know, fumbling that kickoff. That's the second half. That was a difference in the game, right? You think? There, <laughs> that's in the past. Huh. So I think the way we ended the season is only going to make the team better. Okay, the team only going to make us better. And as far as the offense go, I mean, our offense was mainly, you know, James Winston heroics, praying to God he doesn't throw a pick. Mike Evans, Cameron Bray every once in a while. Uh, especially in the red zone, to quit Rogers during that spell, and um, and and uh, sometimes um, Humphreys, which it's not a knock on Humphreys. No, Humphreys is he's a good uh, he he he's a good receiver, but he's not that compliment receiver that that we need opposite Mike Evans. All right, Adam Humphreys, I believe. I mean. People want to talk about having these slot receivers. Yeah, but we have a slot receiver in that conference. We need a number two receiver. Now, maybe a guy that can play, you know, in, in the slot and outside. Yeah, and, and go on. There was a couple guys like that in, in the draft. Um, I can't think of their names, but well, there was a couple guys like that. I think Ross. Um. D.D. Uh, Westbrook, um, the, the name being thrown out there. Corey Davis, but I don't think we'll be able to get him. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about the draft later. Okay, and then, okay, so now let's get to the defensive side of the ball. Obviously, we had our ups and downs. We started the season slow. And then about halfway, you know, after that um, a a Atlanta game, the defense had been playing elite during that five-game winning streak. Putting him by playing elite, you know, for getting after the quarterback. Well, we're at least getting some pressure on the quarterback, um, you know, causing turnovers. And then, somehow that. I mean, even the, the defense was even playing good in that Dallas game. It's just that offense wasn't. Was in a funk, and you know that Dallas offensive line was, you know, was a, uh, you know, tiring the defense out, and you know the defense got tired, and you know they, uh, you know, they ended up cl closing the game. Even still, we only lost by the score, six points. He lost six points to Dallas. This team can't compete with anybody in the league right now. And that's including and that's including New England. We can compete with any team in the league. So James got to quit on the turnovers. Um, what killed us on defense was um, we need another pass rusher. Um, the Will Golden injury, you know, got hurt at the end of that end of that doubt. That also hurt us in the Dallas game. Uh, with him Golson getting hurt at, at the end of that game. Well, and Demar too. Um, as long as we can stay healthy and we add a few more pieces, this team is well on its way to having to really having a breakout season. If we didn't call this team a breakout season, like uh, we can next season week, we'll <laughs> be able to compete and you know for the division again, be right in it, but the time winning it. It's close. Um, and, uh, okay, so Mike Smith now. 
well, actually on defense, sorry, um, Quan, uh, led the league, uh, tackles, well, total tackles, um, yeah, he's only, he's only a Pro Bowl, uh, uh, Pro Bowl, um, alternate, like, really, show the Pro Bowl's fraud, um, uh, Frank Grimes had a decent season, Hargraves, um, for a rookie, I mean, not too shabby. Um, safeties, off and on. Uh, Keith Tandy, I think, he's he's gonna have a he's gonna be a starting safety. Yeah, he's gonna be he's gonna be a starting strong safety. I think. Yeah, he's gonna be a strong he's gonna be a strong safety. Boys. And Conte we might keep at depth. Uh, uh, it's more likely that he leaves. Or leads or wait either leads or gets released one of those it's more likely that happens we might keep him because of his better presence but Medugo I think will be better death and um, I mean he flashed here and there no they both did but it's not good enough and I think we'll look to add a free safety um, Either in for his seat or, or um, maybe likely the draft. Um, I mean, maybe for his seat because add a veteran back there. Yeah, add a veteran back there. Uh, All right, for his seat. We'll, we'll add a. Okay, I'm telling you right now, we will add a star safety. Star free safety. In, in for his seat. Eric Berry. Man, we get Eric Berry. Ooh, man, the demon's be on fire. And then, uh, I mean, Noah Spence. Um, he, he had a good rookie season. You know, he had a couple few sacks. How many sacks? He had like, what, five, six sacks, I think? He had a good rookie season. Playing through an injury, which yeah, he just had surgery on it. Like today, yesterday, he just had surgery. On it. it was successful. And then um, let's see, Trevor McCoy, you no know, Pro Bowl season, um, good for him. No, Clinton McDonald, eh, we might look to add. Um, a, a big nose tackle next to him, but we'll still keep, we, we will still keep, uh, Clint, we'll, we'll still keep, uh, keep, uh, Clint McDonald, yeah, we'll still keep him. Whoa, <laughs> damn, I just let one rip, but, um, yeah, but, uh, we'll still keep him. Whether he'll still be a starter or he'll, or he'll be in a rotation. But I think we'll look to add a big nose tackle. Net. To have next. To, to help um, to help in our uh, run defense. Which our run defense was not bad. That just. That will make it even better. Have a big nose, ta nose tackle that can freaking move some people. You know. Like a Vince Wilford type. You know. Freaking move people around. Well, uh, offensive lineman around. Um, Robert Ayers, you know, who's had off and on injuries. Um, yeah, decent season. Um, defense overall, I mean, same thing at the offense, you know. Uh, uh, up and downs. Um, Alright, so now, so overall, I'd say so. Alright, so now grades for, grades for everybody. For the offense, I give, I give the offense a, a C plus to a B minus. We, see, we did pretty, I mean, we did okay for the talent that we had. And the circumstances with injuries and Doug and, you no, know, for, so for the talent and certain, 
under the circumstances, I give her offense like a C plus to a B minus. It's pretty Okay. That's like, no, C plus. C plus. No, it was slightly above average. Because of my efforts. <laughs> okay, that's why it's above average. Now our defense, I give our defense a B. A B. Straight B. The defense basically it carried it carried the team, I guess, a little bit down the stretch until the last couple games. Well besides the last game. Yeah, straight B, maybe B plus. Um, you know, the uh, the defense played good, and and the defense is close to being on elite status. It's gonna be elite. It should be elite next year. It should be elite like like pretty much through all the way through the league. Once we add the pieces. Okay, now. All right, so that's my thoughts on the season, you know, overall, and then, and the coaching. Well, oh, and special teams. All right, Aguayo, yeah, he had his struggles. Then he went on a run, you know, of making his field goals. And then towards the end of the season, he missed a couple. Yeah, his struggles were noticed. Actually, we are... I say we're gonna bring no, we already did bring in a competition. We signed somebody to a future contract. Um, he's, he's he's out of college though. I don't think was he. I don't know. I think he might have a little bit of NFL experience. Um, I don't know. I, I had to bring it up again, but I mean he had the leg. I mean if you want to call it competition, I guess. You know. But uh, I think uh, Aguayo will will. He'll, he'll get he'll get his act together and he'll have a you know he'll be right up there with you know, the good kickers next season um, yeah, and making making all his field goals pretty much so I don't think Aguayo is going to be an issue in the future um, Brian Anger as we all know he got his uh, extension punter uh, he uh, Oh, simply, he was he was great. <laughs> I mean, I know he's a punter, but I mean, he played a big part. He, I mean, he was pinning teams back like like there were no tomorrow. He was like, I think what second, third in pinning teams inside the twenty. He was he was simply elite in that department. Um, the Pro Bowl alternate. Which I believe we should have gotten for him. But, you know, the, the punters on, you know, playoff teams or teams with better records, you know, they're just better, you know. They're better. <laughs> yeah. You know, why love games? <laughs> but, um, but yeah, Brian Anchor, I mean, well deserved extension, and, uh, we hope he keeps kicking that way. He'll be keep kicking that way. Um, and then uh, coverage was, you know, off and on throughout the season. Uh, we had a period to where we had really good coverage, um, and then we had a period to where you know, we might have gave up some returns. But hey, every team does. So um, overall, I give special teams an overall. A C plus. C to a C plus. Yeah, and the only thing I bring that down is our coverage wasn't um, our coverage wasn't um, consistent, and our uh, and and the Guelph for the Guelph uh, struggles. So, so yeah, a little bit above average. I say I might give. 
I might give Rush Brazil to him in the B range. A little bit above average. So, alright, so we're already 40, at 40 minutes. And then, sorry, so now let's, let's touch on Mike Smith a little bit. Alright, so obviously we all know the situation. Obviously, some of these uh, coaching hires are going down. Obviously, the first hire was, or what the first hire? The build in Denver did it today. Oh, yeah, the Jacks. The, um, a little bit of sigh of relief, you know, the Jacks and the staying in-house and get, and getting, um, and, uh, promoting, um, you know, uh, Doug Marone to interim to, um, which I think that was a good move for the Jags. Um, you know, the Jag did some, you know, did some things in offense the last couple games that, uh, you know, that he was there. Um, interim coach, you know, Blake Boyle did some good things. And so, so they're going to build on that and keep him, keep him there to help, um, Help play worlds in that offense, and then uh, I mean, and they got Tom Coughlin that's uh, making all making all the decisions pretty much. You know, VP player player personnel guy, Mike Price. He's gonna be making all the football decisions, and I believe, I believe, he, yeah, Tom Coughlin, I believe is gonna have finals A on uh, on on their roster. So, it's going back to the Jacksonville, just not as coach. Going to be a, you know, going to be the head man. <laughs> well, it's going to be making all the personal dumb things, D decisions. So, um, so good for them. Then the Denver, um, uh, Denver uh, getting Van Joseph, which. Well, early on it wasn't a thing, but um, but the past few days, um, you know, the big kick had been kicking steam. And, um, I think it. I think I, I think actually that is a good move. They're gonna keep that defensive culture. Well, not with Wade Phillips. Wade, he's probably leaving. Probably now since they're they hired a defensive coach. Yeah, Wade Phillips is leaving Denver. Um, but uh. But I mean, I think they'll they'll still keep the culture there, except um, and you know he'll hire his offensive staff, which Mike McCoy could go there. Um, so I think that's that's good good for Denver. I think I think Van Joseph will do a, a decent job. Cause Denver doesn't need to rebuild. They just, just just like Van Joseph said, they need to reboot. <laughs> you know. They're not rebuilding, they're rebooting. You know, they're getting things back together. Um, you know. They just need help on offense. You know. That's it. And, and not even that much help. There's a, a better quarterback. For developed terms. Or, you know, more. And then, um, then, what was the other? Oh, and the build was Sean McDermott. I think that could be a sneaky good move for them. The Panthers defensive coordinator. Ah, uh, hey, guess what? The Panthers just got weaker today, folks. The Panthers got weaker today. <laughs> Sean McDermott. God, he's leaving for that crappy Bills organization. That's that. He wanted to get the hell out. Carolina. No. He he kind of looks at head clip before. Even uh, the Bucks look the Bucks looked at him, interviewed him for a uh, for you know knew all along it could be Dirk. You know. So um, he he he's a no nonsense guy. 
the Panthers have always been about no nonsense. You know, Ron Vera, you know, he's gonna have that no no nonsense guy on on his uh, staff because he's a no nonsense guy. So he's gonna help change the Bills culture. Yeah. So I think I mean good for him. Good for him. Alright, and so now this is getting to the Mike Smith situation. There's still a chance that he still leaves, guys. We can't forget about San Diego. I mean, I know they got the situation with, you know, possibly moving to L.A. and shit. But. I mean. San Diego can be a. I mean, that could still be a good fit for Mike Smith. I mean, it's bad that we don't want him to leave. I mean, that could be a good fit for Mike Smith, guys. Because the Chargers, I don't think they've interviewed anybody else. I mean, yeah, because they're waiting on a freaking playoff team, to be fairness. But... I mean, we don't know how Mike Smith's interview went with him. I mean, he was a very close second. He was this close to getting the Jaguars. Until they decided to, you know, stay in house for Blake Bortles' sakes. And stay with Doug Brown, promoting him to full, full time head coach. So I think there's still a chance that he, you know, he ends up taking that San Diego job. So because I think Mike Smith is gonna want to go go somewhere to where there is an established quarterback, or at least a good quarterback. And that has some defensive personnel. San Diego has that. And they, and they got the players. They got players on both sides of the ball. Better than the Jags in some ways. So. He still has a chance to leave guys. And, uh, but, you know, I don't think the defense will hurt really. I don't think they will. I think I think they I think the defense will embrace that hey, we can prove ourselves that hey, you know. We don't need Mike Smith coaching us guys. We learned under a year under him. Let's get this thing rolling. Okay, I think that I think that deep, our defense will have that mindset. And we'll, I think we would embrace him. I mean, I'm not saying oh yeah, he gotta leave so we so we can See if that happens. No, 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 no. If he could stay for at least another year, yeah, that will be greatly appreciated. But, but I'm saying, if he were to leave to, let's say, San Diego, but there's still a chance, too, that these other teams don't interview San Francisco um, and St. Louis. Is there another one I'm missing, maybe? I mean, there's still a chance that, you know, that they could end up interviewing him. I mean, St. Louis, um, they might be closing in on Sean McVay from uh, the Redskins office. Young guy. I mean, hey. Where? Fuck St. Louis. But, I mean, he will fuck all these teams, really. But I'm, just, I'm just touching on him. Whatever. But, San Fran, um, I mean, they've been interviewing a lot of people. Who has team? They're 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 rebuilding. Um, so there's still, I mean, I'll, I'll say there's still a thirty percent chance that Mike Smith still ends up leaving. I think that the defense would embrace it, and I think there's a couple outside guys that we can bring in, or we might stay internal. You know, Mark Dubner, he got some. With some play calling experience, John Hoke, um, Jay, Jay Hayes. But we'll worry about that when, uh, when and if that then needs to happen. During that, good season, Bucks. You know, good hard fall season. Okay, now let's touch on, okay, going forward in the offseason for like a minute or two. 
All right, so what we need, okay, to get us over the hump, obviously we need another offseason underdog and, and, and a fairly intact coach staff. That may or may not include Mike Smith. It may be some of the best staff. But they can go with him. But, we need is we need um maybe a replacement at right tackle or center or both maybe if if we think somebody you know is out there that's better than what we have and then uh, maybe you look at some running backs particularly in the draft. So on offense, all right, maybe right tackle, right, ta right tackle, center, or both, maybe. Running back in the draft, or for agency, but particularly in the draft, like if we want to get a new starter, potential starter, then you you can look in, in the draft this year because there's there's a lot of running backs coming out. Down with Cook. Leonard Fournette, you name it. Um, then uh, you got a, uh, and then but the main thing we need on offense is uh, besides running back, is uh, obviously we need more receivers, at least one, and maybe another tight end too, because uh, there's one. I saw this one mock. On, uh, on on uh, the red board on the uh, peer report, and this guy had a mock. Uh, Nate, he had a uh, he had us uh, getting uh, O.J. Howard from Alabama. So, um, so, hey, well, could possibly get him, you know, somebody besides Bright, you know, um, so maybe, a, so maybe an, an, another tight end, another receiver or two, could potentially look in for HC for that, but we also some young guys coming out in the draft. And then uh, then on D so that's basically well already and then obviously James beneath the cut down on turnovers. Now then on defense we need uh, we need some more defensive linemen. We need at least uh, we need a, a, a defensive tackle. I think. Uh, I mean, not only the defensive defensive tackles that well, that we have are not good, or not serviceable. No, I mean, you know, Clay McDonald, Akeem Spence. I mean, yeah, they're decent tackles, but we need a big motherfucker back to Joe. We have big. Fucking loop people. We might be able to find, and you can find those in free agency. Jonathan Hankins, um, I think from New York, I think. Um, but or some people are bringing up his name. And, you know, he has, and he has a good stats, and good stature. And I think he'd be a he'd be a good fit. Um, um, the corners are fine. Shoot AJ Brema and we he'll take back over that that slot corner. Well, it'll be between him and JV JV and that um uh, uh, Elliot. I think they'll both play half the time slot. Shoot um, AJ Brema and him. 
Javion Elliott. And then, uh, but, I mean, the main thing we need on defense is safeties. Well, I think one is safety. Keith Tandy, I think, he's going to be an emerging star. Okay, he's going to be an emerging star. He's going to be our starting strong safety. He's going to, He's going to be making the plays up. And then, um, oh, plus we're going to have more corner breath, um, corner, cornerback depth because Ryan Smith is moving back to, moving specifically back to cornerback, to a cornerback this season. This offseason. So, that'll, so I'll, I'll add some depth back corner. But, but we need a, we need a good free safety that can go out there, be an all-around free safety. You can make plays on the ball, you know, make plays in the run game. And we need an instinctive, you know, center of the field free safety. Not just a guy who's physical, but he freaking make plays on the ball, instinctive, he beats the quarterback. You know, basically, yeah, we can pretend, we can get a, a Maybe get a, you know, good veteran, like Eric Berry, or some sort, in for agency. Put a veteran back there. Defense set. And then get, get, and get another um, edge rusher. Yeah. So, other than that, I mean, the team's close. Is this video dragging on almost an hour. So... As always, Bucks fans, you know, siege the day. All right, team close. We'll get there next season. All right, we'll be in. We'll be, we'll be playing in January next season. All right, knock on wood. All right, now I'll be making a video on my NFL predictions for for a divisional round. So after this. See you today, Bucks fans.